All right. All right. Thank you very, very much for coming. I, you know, um, thank you, Lynn, so mm -hmm. much for hosting this event. Thank I'm you. Very honey, excited to be here. For being here. For being who you are, Tom. <laughs> thank Seriously, you. and all that you're bringing forth, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. So, for all of you that don't know, I'm Tom Casella, and I'm a music teacher and researcher. Um, I have been teaching at a special needs school for the last nine years, and I've put a lot of research into the field. Um, and I developed my own curriculum where I connected music to geometry. And out of that, I came up with this theory that God's a musician because of the correlation between music and geometry. It, it, it's, it, it fits so well together that it's, it cannot be a coincidence. And that since everything in reality is geometric and can be measured geometrically, then, and if God created the entire universe, I believe <laughs> that God's using it. Mm -hmm. I love your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the good vibe. I'm I'm feeling good vibe. Yes, I'm I'm like this is That's great. No, this is really cool. This is, this, yeah. it's very, this, is, this is like... Can you look at you? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, it, so it comes into this whole idea that God, that God is a musician and that he created everything through the, the medium of harmony. And that God created the laws of harmony to create the physical reality that we, that we enjoy and that we experience today. Um, this very first slide I thought was phenomenal because when you first you see the mountains and the trees and then in the lake you can see the reflection of the trees. A perfect mirror image. And as you, and as you go across, it turns into a sound wave right here. And it's the exact equilibrium of that sound. So it's, sound is everywhere in nature. It's coming out everywhere. And there's a second slide here of a, of a different mountain range, but it's still going into a sound frequency, and it seamlessly goes into it. This one also. And even a boat going through water, the, the symmetry. And today what we're going to talk about a lot is symmetry. The perfect e equilibrium in the way things are created in leaves and in, in, in moths or butterflies, in trees and our own bodies. Um, well, I just remember before, let me go back one slide, I apologize. I just want to tell you what we're in for, what we're in store, uh, in store for today. The first half of this presentation is going to be a lot of information. It's going to be following my thought process and how I I've come to the conclusions that I've come to. Um, the evidence, the discoveries, and, and all of that. Um, and then the second half, once our brains are completely full of information, completely saturated, we're going to do um, a chakra cleansing meditation, where I'm going to play music and guide you through a meditation. Um, you know, I, I actually I have a, 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 a microphone and stuff, but no, I don't need it, right? No. You can hear me I all hear fine. You very well okay, here, good. Right? It's thinking all this stuff through. Mm -hmm. um, so, that's what we're in store for today, okay? Now, I get questioned a lot about what my thought about what, who God is or what God is. Is, you know, uh, is he a man walking on the earth? Is he some, some, somebody up in the clouds? Does he not exist? Does he exist? Is he just an energy? And I really love this John Lennon quote. quote. I believe in God, but not as one thing. Not as an old man in the sky. I believe what people call God is something in all of us. I believe that what Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and all the rest said was right. It's just the translations that have gone wrong. Now, I can't, couldn't agree with that more because religion and all of these different dogmatic systems, they, at their core root, have the values of love and understanding and all the beautifulness of love in there. It's the translations that have gone wrong where people are trying to control other human beings through different ways of um, saying, you know, this is right or this is wrong, and, and whatever your religion is, is fine. But to do any sort of war or killing or anything in the name of God is not okay. To tell somebody that they're, you know, uh, that they're not, they're not going to heaven and they're going to do this or that unless they do this, and for all these different things, it's, it didn't seem right to me. So I went on a lifelong quest of, my 33 years so far to figure out who is 
God, and what does he do, well, how did he do it, and how am I connected to him, and what's, what's the story? Um, and also, John Lennon is probably the most unknown, famous sound healer of all time, because he wrote the song Imagine in the key of C, but he tuned it sharp to 528 hertz, which is one of our frequencies today. Now, I wanted to show you what 528 means. When I say 528, a lot of people say, well, like, okay, what is that? This is where I could use the microphone. Can everyone hear this? Check. There you go. I probably don't have to wear this, but I can use this at least for this. So this, this fork is tuned perfectly to 528 hertz. So that means that the top of this fork is going back and forth 520 times per second in cycling. Just to hear the difference, this big one right here is, is 174 hertz. And they all have different properties to them. Now, where I got off, where I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the stuff, is I'm going to do a, a chakra healing meditation. And why are these frequencies healing? Why are they connected to your different chakras? Why is this not talked about more? Why do some people have certain frequencies for some parts of colors, and then these, these all have different colors? Like, for instance, the, um, the 528 I had just hit, this is, this is the color yellow. But you get a different sound. And I'm going to prove to you why these frequencies are special and why they're healing. So let's, moving on forward... I chose this picture here because now, now we're going to start on this journey here to understand the reality that we live in. I chose this because it's moving water. Everything is moving, no matter what. If it is in, in physical reality, if it has any, sort, any kind of shape or form, it is moving. The water is moving, the rocks are moving, and not just because the, wind, the ice is pushing them in the winter, but it's all made up of atoms. We're all made up of atoms. This is nothing new. We went to the moon. Guess what? Moon rocks made up of atoms. Nothing new, right? So we have to start understanding what is an atom. You know, we've actually never have seen an atom. We only can make up what's going on with shooting electrons out of an electron microscope. But Max Planck, Max Planck is one of the most famous physicists of all time. And in 1918, he won a Nobel Prize for developing um, his different methods of, of measuring matter. And he created the Planck scale, which all quantum things are now measured in because it's the smallest measurement possible because it is the, the, uh, uses the speed of light. So you cannot measure anything smaller. And I thought that this quote by him was phenomenal. As a man has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about atoms this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle, particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. And that's another thing I'm going to show you that I think I have discovered the matrix. Now, at any time, I want you to be thinking in your head, if I'm presenting something in a certain way where you'd like to see something in a different order, just... Keep that in mind, because I, I feel like, you know, Alice, could you hand me that, that tube? Yes. This thing? Yes. Right. Thank you. Now, all my research has kind of led me into this tube, and it's really hard to see, and I'll get to this in a moment. But th these helixes and these numbers is the construction, I believe, of everything that it, um, that's physical in the universe. It shows helixes and numbers. I'm going to get to this, but this is what I believe the matrix of all matter is, and we're going to get to that. But at least I was just thinking I really wanted to show that. This is the first presentation I brought the tube to. So, we're, we come back, oh wait, and I just wanted to show here, this is an, the atom of a hydrogen and hydrogen and oxygen, which is H2O. Now, H2O is a big part of why this is healing and sound healing. We have to understand the properties of water, the hidden messages in water, and how water behaves. Alright? So, we go and we look at our Earth. Our Earth is 75% water. It has a heartbeat called the Schumann Resonance, about 7.8 beats per second. Uh, and, it, and it is growing and it, it's alive. 
Now, we are just like our Earth. We're 75% water. We have a heartbeat. And we are alive. And we're growing on our Earth. Dr. Masuru Emoto was a hydrologist. And he studied water. And he did all of his experiments with special cameras. He would freeze water and then take pictures of the water crystals that he took, uh, that he was freezing with special new cameras. What, it, what ended up happening was he, he thought like, okay, well, what would happen if I did non-physical things to the water? So he would take a water bottle and project the feeling of love into the water bottle. And then he would freeze it and take pictures. Then he would put the thought of thank you into a water bottle. Just the thought. And then he would take that picture. He would play music for it. John Lennon's Imagine, Amazing Grace. He would put that into the, into, the, into the water. And what would happen was, every single time, and every time they did this, a, a, a unique crystal formed. Every time you play John Lennon, every time you play John Lennon's Imagine, you're getting water crystal formations like this. This is love. This is the Mozart Symphony. Peace. Thank you. In this one, I will kill you with negative emotion. There's no, geom there's no geometries in here. It's, it's scattered. It's, it looks kind of disgusting. Now, this right here, this, I, I blew this up into the, into the next frame, which is really big. Now, you have to understand here, this is the Fujiwara Dam. The water is polluted, okay? He, they, he took some of the water and he took a pit, and this is what it looked like. Just it with nothing going on. This was, it was then prayed over by a Buddhist monk. They didn't put chlorine in it. They didn't touch the water. They didn't put it through a filter. The only thing that happened was the intention of positive energy that was coming from the monk being blessing the water. And then you get something that is really close to the, the positive emotions of love, the, the different water crystals. So why and how does this happen? Nobody knows. They don't know. But really what's going on is your brain is sending out frequencies that's affecting the water. Your emotions are putting out this, this non-physical energy. And these are other examples of, like, this is a heavy metal song, um, some folk songs, the Chopin songs. I mean, when you really look at it and you listen to the music, the music ones really get me. You know, even with, um, there's one that's like a photo of a dolphin. I mean, it's the different photos and the different things of the different water crystals are amazing. Now, this is where the forks come in, these frequencies. Then they started just putting plain frequencies into the water. And what would happen is... This is our 396, so we can look at 396 and put in, uh, maybe I have not. So this is 396, and that's what the crystal formation forms for this frequency. This is 417. This is transmutation, facilitating change. 528. But you can see, like, the crystal formations aren't exactly exact because you, when you look at the Imagine versus the 528 in this, there's a lot more emotion that's going on into the song than just the pure frequency. Because I was thinking about that. Well, if you record that 528, shouldn't that be the exact same frequency or it's water crystal form? But it's not. Your solar plexus, or this is your solar plexus, this is your heart chakra. And then 741. This is communication. And then 852. Is your um, connection of your left and right hemispheres of the brain and cognition. Also known as your third eye. Now, even if water's not frozen, this is somatic, somatics here. This is a water droplet that's on top of a speaker. The, Speaker's covered in, in this blue saran wrap, and then a vibration's going through it, and the water moves in perfect geometry. It makes a perfect um, hexahedron or a six-sided uh, shape, and it's, how does it do that? The reason why is because sound is geometric and sound has form. So now, let's just go back and remember, we're 95% or 75% water, right? Now, if vibration and thoughts have that much effect over water, we're doing that. You have to imagine what our thoughts and what our feelings are doing to ourselves. So, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to harness specific frequencies or emotions to then 
apply to ourselves to help heal the body, to help heal the mind, to help heal the chakras. So this brought me into, uh, I started studying the flower of life in geometry just because I was looking for the truth I was just researching. And in that, I found out that the flower of life is found over in every single region of the world. It belongs to no culture. It belongs to no religion. It outdates, um, it, it basically it outdates everything of like human existence that we're known in recorded history. Okay, we, we're going back beyond, and nobody knows where it comes from. This is in Egypt. We have it in Turkey. We have it in China. We have it in Buddha's hand. Um, uh, we have it. Leonardo da Vinci was writing it. It's in Ireland, Scotland. Um, it's found all over the world. It's all known by the flower of life, even though it's in different languages. So, this is the Temple of Osiris. This is the oldest place where they found the Flower of Life. And the Temple of Osiris is known as the, um, the Temple of Resurrection. And it's dated to be at least 10,000 years old. Now, inside this temple is engraved in the granite the Flower of Life pattern. And it's not, it's not chiseled in. It's not painted in. It's engraved in the atomic structure of the granite. Now, this is back when... They're building the pyramids with, you know, slave labor and copper and ropes. I, I mean, that's another story that you can investigate that there's no way they did that. Even today we can't make the pyramids. So it's modern marvel. It, it's impossible. We cannot move that big of stuff. And yet, it's burned with a laser into the granite. How do we explain this to be at least 10,000 years old? I guess it's a lot older than that. I think the Sphinx is a lot older than that. I think all the temples are a lot older than that. But the fact is... Here, here's the flower of life, and why is it so special? And why is it known as the flower of life? Well, you, it's created really simply with circles. You start with one circle, and then you go to the top of that circle, and you draw another one. And you go to the intersection point, you draw another one. And then you keep following this, and you keep doing this seven times until you get this right here, and it, that's called the seed of life. The seed of life is very interesting because there's seven circles, and the seven circles line up exactly with Genesis. The first two circles is the first day. The second, the, the third circle is let there be light, and then inside, inside that pattern is the supposedly the the, um, the electromagnetic frequencies of light. But it, there is definitely in there the square roots of two, three, and five, which is the beginning of trigonometry of the construction of light and matter. Now, when you when you keep tessellating, and what I mean by tessellate is that when you you it's, a, it's a, a pattern that will continue to go on without overlapping or leaving gaps into each other, like a tile floor. You have a tile floor, and, it, and they all fit together just nicely. When you keep on adding the circles at the intersection points, and this is a 61 grid circle, then you have these 13 circles. Now, these 13 circles is called the fruit of life. So now we're getting further into our development of creating matter. When you take the fruit of life, and you connect the center of each circle with every other circle, you get this geometric structure called Metatron's Cube. Now, Metatron's Cube holds the five platonic solids. Their po platonic solids are, are polyhedras that all have the same face. So there's a icosahedron that will all have the same face of the triangle, and each exterior and interior angles are exactly the same. And then this one's a triangle again, but there's, you know, the, this angle is exactly the same as this angle, as that angle. Uh, and there's only five that met, meet this criteria. There's, um, there's a icosahedron, octahedron, star tetrahedron. They, it's doubled up, but really it's just the triangle, but they show the, the star because it's showing the inverse of itself. Hexahedron, which is a cube, and a dodecahedron. Now, these all have some really amazing um, meanings and, um, and thoughts behind them. They're called platonic solids. Now, they're named after Plato. He didn't discover them, but he was the first one to use them in his theory of everything. And in one of his great dialogues, he was talking about the creation of the universe and, and how this all happened in harmonies and ratios and whatnot. And he states that these five shapes are what break down every single part of matter. So, he said the tetrahedron was fire, the octahedron was air, ether, thought, consciousness, earth, and water, the different elements. Now, this was back, what, 400, I think it was 360 BC he came up with this. So, that's a really long time ago, and since then, people didn't really believe it was true. 
But what happened was in the 1980s, Robert J. Moon created the Moon model and he demonstrated that every single element on the periodic table is connected to one of the five platonic solids. And then all the jaws dropped and all the scientists were like, well, really? How about that? But do we talk about this much in schools? Do we talk about this much at all in anything? I, it's, not, it's something that doesn't happen a lot because the, the powers that be don't want us to be intelligent, open spiritually to the rest of the world. And that they want us to be um, on different medications and eating geometric, geometric, uh, genetically modified foods they, you know, and to keep our vibrations low. Whereas what we're trying to do is raise the vibration of, of, of consciousness in the, in the world. And that's you know, the, what I'm doing in teaching these classes and, and moving forward. So then I, I would, loved the flower of life. I loved all this stuff. I sat down one day and I connected it to music. And literally, I did not think very hard on this at all. I sat down and started writing notes in, and, and before I knew it, I had a huge pattern. And then I sat there for a couple months and developed the flower of music. And what the flower of music is it holds music in a perfect um, geometric structure, whereas going to one direction is always going to be the same. So if you just have C in the center here, you can apply formulas. I mean, let's go to this thing here. This is the root flower formula. This is the building block. Just how the flower of life, or the seed of life, is the building block that made the fruit of life. The fruit of life made Metatron's cube, which created all the different shapes for the periodic table, right? This is the seed of the root flower, I call it the root flower formula, which then creates, which will go on and tessellate forever and ever in all directions. But every time you go yellow up, it's going to be a major third. Purple up is always a perfect fifth. And then a minor third and major thirds. So every time you go a purple up, you're getting the you're getting the the um, quality of a perfect fifth. If you go purple down, you're getting the sound of a perfect fourth. Let me put this up a little bit. If you go up a, a go up a green, you have your minor third. But if you go down a green, you have your major six. If you go up a yellow. You have a major third, and if you go down a yellow, you have a major sixth, a minor sixth, I'm sorry. So these tones are com complete equilibrium with each other. For this, for this is the amount of distance this goes up, that's the amount of distance that goes down. So what that did for me was, now I have this pattern where it's perfect fifth, 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 going up, C to G to D to A to E, and then fourths down, and then major thirds up, and then minor third, or major sixths down. So then you can take formulas and apply it to it, and you don't have to know anything about music theory to get any sort of um, harmonic information out of it. You can sit here and have, you have all of your um, different um, harmonies that exist in the 21 modes and the 15 keys of Western classical music. You have songwriting formulas, and I have a lot more formulas that I don't even put on this. This is just the, the pamphlet that I have where it's just a small amount of information to, just as a reference sheet. So we go here. Now, for those that don't completely understand music, it's what's going on is it all it, Pythagoras is the father of of harmony, and he he has a really interesting story. He was walking through the village and he heard that some hammers made beautiful sounds would hit, some of them made not so good sounds in their hit. So he went in and investigated, and he found that. The, 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 there was four different weights of the hammers, okay? And that the different ones hit against with each other made different noises and different sounds. So when a, tw when a 12 pound hammer was hit with a, a 6 pound hammer, they came up with an octave. Whoops, 12 pound, or 12 pound, 6 pound. That's the harmony that came up with it. And then when it was hit with a, a 12 pound and 8 pound hammer, it created the quality of a perfect fifth. When he, the 12 pound with the 9 pound hammer hit, it created the perfect fourth. And then with the 9 pounds and, and uh, 8 pounds, you got the uh, you have a major second, which is a little bit dissonant, but it's still considered constant in harmony. So he started figuring out that these are ratios, and that let's just say you took made that 24 pounds and made that 12 pounds. It's still the ratio that makes the quality. The quality of, of that stuff. So how mathematically notes fit together is what the harmony is going to come out. Every time you hit a perfect fifth in whatever key, it's always a 3 to 2 ratio. So that, 
Keep that in mind. So then, he, even he figured out with strings and the length of the strings, the demonic guitar neck is intonated exactly the same way. The, the octave is on the 12th fret, which is exactly halfway between the nut and the bridge. And all of them are... Uh, and, the, and the guitar is, ex, is the perfect example of it, visually seeing the spatial between the, the ratios. Now, now that we have the idea that harmony is based upon ratios, and in music, we can count the distance, distance between ratios by half steps. So if I start on C, and I go up one note, or one half step, so if I go C, and I have zero here on C, because zero, C is zero half steps away from itself. It's right there, you don't have to travel at all. So here we are at, at C. If we go up one half step, right, and then we're on C sharp or D flat, and what that does is it creates the interval of a minor second. Okay? Now if we go up one, two, we have a major second. If we go up three, minor, minor second, I mean ma minor third rather, major third, perfect fourth, augmented fourth or tritone, perfect fifth, minor sixth, Major sixth, uh, minor seventh, major seventh, and octave. So those twelve and beyond, you can start measuring your distances between the intervals, not just with the ratios, but with counting half steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we're counting half steps, and they represent different ratios. Okay. Is everybody following so far? Yes. All good? Okay. So, then I started to experiment. Okay, so what if we took C, and I just assigned middle C to be zero, and then I numbered the keyboard, and then I n numbered it all up like we just did before, but going to the left, I just started counting backwards with negative, with negative numbers. Okay? Then I just said, well, let's take our root flower formula, and we'll plug them in with numbers instead. Now you can really see the equilibrium in here. You have zero, then you have up seven, down seven. Up four, down four. Up three, down three. It equals zero. There is, the, the, it, it's, it's, so when I first saw this, and I still already had my idea going that like the universe was, the universe was music and this was the idea, before, um, this is the, the building block behind it, and then there's this theories out there that nothing really exists. It's all just in vibration. And that this just proves, in my mind, nothing really exists. It all collapses back into zero. Mm -hmm. That it, that there's nothing that we're all in. in I'm getting excited. <laughs> so much. You're good, Doc. Tom, you're doing a great job. <laughs> so, but they're saying that nothing exists. And I'm like, all right, maybe nothing does exist. But, th so then I went up and further. So I continued the pattern like I did with the flower music. So instead of this being E and then uh, G sharp, I made it so it's four and an eight. So, and then every single one of these numbers on here represent a harmonic, a note. Okay? Now, I took this and I transferred it over to this isometric graph paper because I just was experimenting and, you know, just, let's just go with because um, this is spaced out the same way. You can see here this is like a you know a hexagram, and this is a hexagram. It's, it's spaced out the same way. It's also called 3D graph paper, isometric graph paper. So I started and said, okay, well here's, here's our grid. Let's, let's start doing some sacred geometry to it. We put in our fruit of life. Then we plug in and connect each circle and we get Metatron's cube. Then I started to notice that each line that I was doing was following a harmonic series. This orange line was going in ones. This is going by threes, this is going by fours, this is going by tens, this is going by elevens, sevens. Um, so the, the, it, I was like, well, this is, this is interesting. Now we're going to get to the point where I'm going to show you what these different things sound like. So I sit, then I drew out the five platonic solids, and I drew the sounds, or drew the, the colors that coordinated with the different harmonic series that it was following. So what I mean by that is, like the, the, the um, let's go to, um, let's just say this tetrahedron here. Right, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
Now, when you connected every single one of the dots to this, 28, negative 12, negative 16, it cancels out the zero. Here's the simplest form, negative 3, negative 4, 7. 7 minus 3, 9 minus 4 equals 0. Oh, what's, what happens with the hexahedron? Same thing, equals 0. And it's the perfect equilibrium of these shapes that are, are creating this, creating an equation that equals 0. So, all these equations now, I'm thinking that they're all harmonic equations. This is music. Remember, these aren't just numbers. These are numbers that are counting half steps that represent intervals, that represent music harmony. So, I believe that these, these shapes can be recreated through using the harmon harmonic series to create them. And I just want to show you, like, for instance, this, this line right here, this pur uh, purple line going up. What I mean by harmonic series, it's going up by fits. So this is the sound of the purple line going up. And each line is going up in different, different intervals that are going in. You can imagine the purple line shooting up in perfect fits and the, and the, 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 the orange line going up by half steps. And it's this, oh, I should, maybe I shouldn't have drank so much coffee before. <laughs> 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 you're actually, that's 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 you're actually understanding right? everything. You're getting it? I'm actually, yes. 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 Isn't it incredible? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, it's such a genius and figuring this out and the passion yes. and the love for this time. Yeah. So, I'm just, I'm buying so, a pit, but I'm like, like feeling like my No, we're going really fast pace. Okay, good. And if you want water, let me know. Okay. Well, you know what? I have this. I have this. No, I have this. I have that bottle. Mm. That's the more coffee. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so we, we all know now that each one of these um, five, uh, five, five platonic solids are creating harmonic series of equations that equal zero. Blow my mind, right? Except for the dodecahedron. Now, this is really interesting because the dodecahedron doesn't have an equation. The points don't fall on any numbers. Anywhere. The lines follow a harmonic series, but they don't fall on any sort of um, grid point. Now, my theory behind this is that it represents ether and consciousness. And how these are formed, how the dodecahedron is formed, is by the intersecting lines of the other four platonic solids. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. That the dodecahedron geometrically fits inside of the other four platonic solids. So that's how your mind and emotion can exist inside your brain and body without taking any physical space. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts exist in your brain without physically taking space because it was geometrically created that way that it doesn't have grid points. Anything with grid points is physical matter. Anything without grid points, of like the dodecahedron, is ether and consciousness. And it doesn't, it's not physical. Then that's why this can fit inside of the other ones without taking space. Now, this can exist without physical matter, and it exists perfectly within physical matter. So that's then that's I was thought that this is the, this is the most special of them all. Back in the day, with Plato's time, if you if you it was considered sacred knowledge, and if you got caught talking about it or, um, or sharing it with other people that didn't weren't supposed to have it, it was penalty of death. It was so it's to be able to stand here now and say, here, look at the dodecahedron. You know, I, I'm not facing uh, persecution for sharing the knowledge. So this is, this, these are our five platonic solids. This is what I believe is the, uh, the building blocks to the universe. Not only are they the platonic solids, they're harmonic equations that equal zero. They're perfectly e perfect equilibrium. And so when this pattern is brought out more, because really it's, it's just a pattern or a tessellation that keeps on going on forever and ever, I started drawing out lines. So this is counting by ones this way, negative ones that way. Then I put in the threes. I'm counting in threes going up and threes going down. All in, all in, all in time, keeping perfect equilibrium. This is going up fours and then going down fours. And what you're going to see and start seeing is that for every single number, up sevens, down sevens, for every single number, there's an equal and opposite number on the other side. For instance, if you took the number 33, drew a straight line to zero, it would not hit any other number until it hits its equal and opposite number on the other side, creating perfect equilibrium. And then I have, you know, we're counting by tens, and we're counting by elevens, and then something jumped out at me. It's this zero line. 
zero repeats itself. And it's the same numbers around it. 473, 473, 473, and it's equal on the other side. And then that zero line and this black line is a perfect line of symmetry separating all the positive, uh, positive integers from the negative integers. Now, it's not like there's a positive side and a negative side. This is the line of symmetry that's in everything. It's in our bodies and I, it's in our symmetry of cut it right down the center. And that's the symmetry of our, of our sound wave and our frequencies that uh, we were looking at earlier in one of the first slides. And then when you take the zero line and you wrap it around itself, all of these lines match up, creating helixes. So if you just start here and you follow your yellow line up and you're going up yellow, yellow, when the paper ends, it matches right up to 44, 48, 52, 56. This green line, 21, 24, 27, all oh, the paper ends, but that's okay. 30, 33, 36, it keeps going up. The, the orange line counts up in, in, in single digit intervals, going perfectly up and down on the other side. So this model, it, what they call this, this is a helix. And one of the most famous things that we know about helix is DNA. DNA is in a helix. Now if you think about how sound creates form, and we're form, and we're water, what's our vibration? Our DNA is constantly talking to every single cell in our body, telling what happens to be an eye cell, to be a knee cell, to be a hair cell. It's telling at, at all times. It's vibrating. So, looking at these three guys, you might, you know, he's my favorite, but these guys said it too, that the brain, or what is the we got Einstein, Edison, and Nikola Tesla. All right? Now, these three men all said, the brightest men, possibly whoever lived that we know of, that the brain is a transmitter and receiver of frequency. It's going out at all times. That we're always, always sending out and receiving frequencies with every single person in the room. Right now, all our brains are connected. Right now, we, we, in, in every single place in the world, we are sending out radio waves that are not radio waves because they're stronger in all directions throughout the universe instantaneously. The brain is producing this and receiving this. So you have to start thinking of your brain just not being a control center that does your you know, nervous system and does the breathing and whatever stuff like that. You have to start thinking of your brain being an instrument. And that what you pro think about is what your brain is vibrating, and that's what's connecting to other brains across the universe. And that's how you're getting what you're getting. That's how you're not getting what you're not getting based upon the vibration of the brain. Now, and this is how praying works, and how all of the stuff when it comes to law of attraction. Now, when somebody mostly thinks about prosperity or happiness, or joy, you can see in their life that that's mostly what they have. When someone's talking about sickness, or they're talking about they're worried about this is going to happen, or you know someone's in a, whatever the thing it is, it, they're mostly going to have that. And it's based upon if you can start thinking as, of your brain as an instrument, and you can really control that, and you're consistently persistent with creating those thoughts and vibrations, you can almost start to predict what's going to happen in your life. And you can almost come to this sense of ex, ex, uh, expert, um, expectation. Right? There we go. <laughs> but, and, then, and again, this is how I believe praying works. So a lot of people don't believe in God or whatever, but I, I think that it's one of those things like laws of gravity, that no matter what, the laws of gravity are working. And whether you believe in them or not, you know, if you walk up, show me one person in the world that walk off a building, then they're not going to hit the ground. Everybody is. You know, we may even hold in like that one, one, one percent chance of some possibility to happen, but it's a law. And the way that I believe that, the, that God works is that the universe is his orchestra. And that he created, and his main goal is harmony. Now, it doesn't matter if it's good harmony or bad harmony. If whatever it is, it's, it needs to be in sync with each other. So when you are feeling a certain way, certain people, aspects, circumstances, events are going to come into your life to put you in harmony with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that God is constantly tuning the universe and is constantly feeling and, and you are always talking to God. 
You're, you don't have to sit there and write out like, Dear God, a letter, which I do a lot. But no matter what, He's listening to you. You know, when you, when you speak to God, it's not that He's listening to your words. He's listening to the vibrations coming out of your head. God deals with the language of vibration. That's why they call music the universal language. It's something that we want to, to know and understand so that we can make our lives and our experience here on earth as great as it can be. Because it's so short and it's so, you know, it's so important that we only, I mean, you can talk about if you have many different lifetimes, many of that, but you only can remember right now. And that's for a very good reason that you can only remember right now. But it's to make this experience that we can remember as good as possible. Now, to bring this all back around to understand where this comes into healing, you have your different energy points in your body. Now, just like if you have a computer, right, you have a circuit board. And in the circuit board, there's different energy points where power is going and flowing through. Now, if you were to take a computer and drop it from a high, high spot and hit the ground, what happens? It breaks. It dies. If you take water and you put it under, under water, what happens? It drowns. If you take a computer and, you, and it's running slowly, what do you say? Oh, you think it has a virus. So what do you do? You, you either clean out the virus or maybe you just have to reset the computer, get a reboot. Like you're sleeping. Rest. We are the most complex computer system known in, uh, anywhere. I mean, where our brains, our nervous system is unbelievable. How it, uh, the impulses and shocks that go through our body and understanding how all this works. The, the, the movie screen that we see in our mind, like our eyes are just lenses. They're just cameras. That what really goes on, the electrical impulses go to your cerebral cortex in the back of your head. That's where it gets decoded into everything that we see. So where do we actually see this? Because it's not there. We're seeing it back here, which is complete darkness. It's interesting. So how do we take care of our energy portals? How do like our energy or wheels? Chakra literally means wheel, turning wheel. And it's when one of them is blocked, energy is not going. If you're blocked here, in your heart chakra, your communication and your connection to the universe is not going to be strong. You know, so it's it's moving forward, moving up and out, connection to the earth. Now, metaphysically, these frequencies are representing each one of your chakras. Okay, so and then each one of them is is doing a different um, a different deed for healing. So our root chakra, three hundred ninety six, is liberation from guilt and fear, facilitating change. DNA repair. Now this frequency is amazing because some uh, physicists used, um, or geneticists used the, the frequency of 528 to repair DNA. They don't know how it happened. They don't even, but it's the same idea behind how does the water drop would turn into a perfect hexa hexahedron with just vibration. How does it know? We have all of this. So connect and understand relationships, in, awaken into intuition, spiritual order, remove pain. This, this one is not exactly part of a chakra that I found in my research yet, but something about that vibration reduces pain inside the body. I felt it. Was yeah. It the fork? Yeah. 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 So now we're going to get into, um, into the sound healing and relaxing part. I know I just threw a lot of information at you. But <laughs> they're telling you that God's a musician. you got to have something, some proof. Honestly, it's <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Tom, Honestly. Well, thank you. I actually learned a lot today. Thank you. So this is the this will be the this is the relaxing nice part. Now this is um Fill your 
lungs to about 85%. Now hold it. Now gently and slowly exhale through your mouth. Now breathe in again through your nose. Hold it. And gently and slowly exhale through your mouth. One more time. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it. And now gently exhale. Now imagine a beautiful white golden light floating above your head. Now this light going to pour all over your body, starting at the top of your head. It feels cooling and refreshing. Imagine it flowing over and into your body, cooling and releasing and relaxing all stress and anxiety with pure white light. Imagine it completely covering your body, inside and out. Now. now invite the color red to your root chakra, right at the base of your spine. Visualize the most beautiful shade of red, like that of roses and ripe cherries, covering and emanating through your root chakra. And breathe deeply and feel grounded in the here and now, saying in your mind, I am here, I belong here, Mother Nature provides my sustenance. Visualize breathtaking orange of the setting sun and breathe deeply, letting this color orange to cover and emanate from your navel. This is the center of your emotional intelligence, creativity, and pleasure. Say in your mind, I allow myself to be nourished. I allow my needs to be met.
light the color yellow to your solar plexus, which is right below your sternum. Visualize a lovely yellow that is seen in the field of sunflowers, glistening in the sunlight. Cover and emanate from your solar plexus. This is the center of your personal power and drive. Now say in your mind, I love myself. I am enough. I have the power to create anything in this lifetime. This is the 
center of your expression and communication. Now say in your mind, I speak freely of what I hold true in my heart. And I allow myself to understand others' points of view.
now say in your mind, I am connected to the universe in every way. The Spirit of God is within me. intention of your chakras closing down just a little. Become aware of how you feel and the peace that resonates inside of you. Hold yourself with loving kindness for the beautiful unique being that you are. We will now close this meditation with a grounding and healing prayer. Spirit, Super Consciousness, please locate the origin of our feelings and thoughts any illness or emotional pain. Take each and every level, layer, and aspect of my being to this origin. Analyze it and resolve it perfectly with God's truth. Come through all generations of time and eternity, healing every instant and its appendage is based upon the origin. accordingly to God's will until I'm at the present, filled with light and truth, God's peace and love, forgiveness of myself for my incorrect perceptions, forgiveness of every person, place, circumstances, and events which contributed to this, these feelings and thoughts.
Namaste.